And so we need a language structure that we use as coaches and as players that communicate the reality of what we're seeing, not what we think we see. That's a big issue is just because it looks like cover three doesn't mean it's cover three like we anticipate it to be. We got to read the reality of the post-snap world. So we need a language system that, that communicates space. We need a language that communicates time. And we need a language system that communicates talent. So that's the C, A, and P of the cap. The C is for coverage. So the first thing that we're going to do when we teach and we talk about this heavily in capology is we're going to teach our, our quarterbacks and coaches a, a coverage language based on simple words. So we're going to use the words over, under, inside, and outside. All right. Those words, okay, pinpoint leverage position of a receiver and a defender or in space. Okay. Think of them as X, Y coordinates over, under, inside, or outside. Okay, the time language we're going to use to be able to anticipate intent of a defender on closing on space, all right, is based on the, uh, the A in cap. That's the alignment of the hips or hip angle. That's what A stands for. So C is for coverage over, under, inside, or outside. A is for the angle or the alignment of the hips. So we give four words that communicate the direction of the hips and what those mean. So we have square. So if a defender has square hips at any moment in time, that means he can close on anything in front. They're square to the line of scrimmage. Okay. If his hips are full, that means they're fully turned to the end zone. So he's in a dominant position with his hips to close on vertical space. So that's, that's what we have to make a connection with our coaches and players. Hip angles actually predict the space he can close on at that point in time. So now you know the space that he's in a dominant position to defend and the space that he's weak to defend. All right, so square and full. One is they're opposite of each other. All right, the next hip angle is man. Man means the hips are turned facing the sideline so he can break on outside space. And then zone hip angle means his hips are turned facing the quarterback. He can break on inside space and his eyes can see the quarterback. So man, we want to be more aggressive because he can't see the release of the ball. All right, we want to throw more inside breaking routes. Okay, zone, we got to be more cautious with throwing the football because they can see when we release it, they can close on it faster. And then we want to break, run more outside breaking routes. So every strength of the hip angle, there is a weakness and we have to communicate those. The last language structure we need with the cap is the P, that's the personnel. That's the talent ability of the personnel. So there's three things that we have to evaluate that to determine if space is actually capped. It's cushion. So, we, so our quarterbacks and coaches, we got to be able to process the level of cushion between a defender and receiver, we have to be able to process collision, all right? If we see collision, we have to know that that route is dead, it's capped, it's done. Don't stay on it. These are accelerators, okay? So we have to be able to limit the non-negotiables, what matters most, okay? There's a certain level of cushion we're looking for. If that is, is maintained, then we're going to come off the route. If we can break that cushion, we're going to take the route. Or if there's collision, we're going to come off the route. If there's not, we're going to stay on it. Those are accelerators that allow us to predict the the open space faster. And then the final accelerator, the most important one is closure, All right? We have to be able to communicate the closure ability of defender at the break point, All right? This is how we finally confirm if route space is capped. So we have to go through all three layers, okay? Just because a defender is in the way with coverage of a route doesn't mean the route is actually covered. That's the first thing we got to get away from. Just because a guy's in the way of my route space doesn't mean that route is covered, right? What's his hip angle? What's his closure ability? So there's layers of the onion that we have to peel back to confirm. Now, this is a system now that we built with language that we can go through any clip or any situation on film or on the field, and we can get everybody in the room on the same page, seeing space the same because we're working through the same frames of reference with a common language, right? And frames of reference that don't, they're, they're, they're solid. It's like the North Pole. It's not going to move. And so when you understand that process and put it together, it's powerful because you can perceive things that most people can't. You can see that hidden green square that looks the same with everybody else. So if there's, if there's uh, no questions, I'm going to kind of just give you a few examples of how we do this with grading film. Any, any questions on that, Coach? Yeah, we did get one, um, and uh, I'm, I'm interested to hear this. I, not a question I thought of myself. When you first introduced those ideas about cap, do you prefer to do that like in the film room, in the classroom or actually on the field? Or does it just depend on your situation? Like, would you have a preference when you first, like, yeah. let's say you were starting this with your program, totally brand new, um, you know, and I know you've, you've been at a few different programs and you used it 
Um, where, where would you want to do that? Yeah. So right there, part one, this is capology of the book. So the first section of the book is building capology in the classroom. So we do it in the classroom first, just on a whiteboard or a PowerPoint, and we build the language structure of the coverage alignment and personnel, kind of like I did with you, but we show pictures, we have them draw it, we have them communicate it together. We got to get everybody aligned and understand the definitions. And then we go in the film room. Right. And then we watch film kind of like we're getting ready to do. And we practice grading film using the cap process. And then the final section is we take it onto the field and apply it with field drills. OK, so that's the three phases that we implement this with. And we go exactly step by step how to implement this in the book. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. So now we're going to try to like show some film. This is kind of how we're doing the film. So one of the benefits of the cap process, it allows you to grade film. So I would always tell my quarterbacks and receivers, hey, uh, here's your huddle clips. Go home and watch film and, and, and we'll talk about it on Monday. And so I had no system, no structure to teach him what to look for or how to watch film. Well, now with capology, we have that. So what we do is we take all the pass cut ups that we get from an opponent and we will um, we'll order structure those into a list of every route that attacks a certain defender. Some games we have a few, some games we have many. Um, but again, I try to limit it to around 15 to 20 plays. All right. And so I have my quarterbacks and receivers go through and grade the routes that attack the corners and the safeties. We just grade the back four. And I want to see if their grades match mine. So here's kind of an example of how I would teach that through film. And I'm going to show you kind of our grading scorecard that we give them and show you how we extract valuable information out of that. Now, I'm going to use the Georgia and Tennessee game earlier from this season. I use Georgia as a model because they were arguably one of the best defenses in college football history this year. So what I want to do is show you that there's actually opportunity that Alabama could have taken advantage of in the game or there's mistakes that they could have stayed away from if they had followed these grades. Now, I don't have time to go through this whole presentation. It's about um, it's it's very, you know, it's long. And, and so I can talk to you about where you can access that if you want it. I'm just going to show you a few clips of just how we would teach you. So the first um, defender we're going to grade is number five. He is the, the corner here down here at the bottom of the screen. And so we're going to look for any routes that attack that number five. So here was one. So my quarterback and receivers would grade this, all right? We're grading the post-snap world, all right? It's not about pre-snap. Cap is about the post-snap reality that we're seeing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write slant on the scorecard. It's a one-step slant. And we're going to stop the film at the last step of the quarterback's drop. That's the rhythm phase. So when the, film, when the quarterback hits the last step of his drop, you stop the film. We want to grade OK, cushion or collision at this point, we want to find out, is this defender a cushion player or a collision player? Every defender has to be one or the other. He has to be a cushion or collision player. He's either trying to collision a route or he's trying to play with a certain level of cushion. And if it's a cushion level, we need to know exactly what that cushion level is. In this case, number five, if I zoom in here, you can see he is a collision player. So that, that is just positive collision. So on our scorecard, we put positive collision there. OK, so that is very important to know. Now, how does that help me with game planning? Well, I need to work something, a certain, some sort of release strategy, or I need to put some motion in. I need, might need to do stacks. If he is a positive collision player, I've got to do something different that week within the, the offense or in the plays that I want to run against him to neutralize that. Otherwise, that route space is dead, and the stretch of my route could be destroyed. So that's a very important note in just one play that we found out. The next thing we're going to grade is his dominant position, his coverage. Right. Remember the four words I talked about. So we're going to put a quad, a vertical and horizontal axis, an X and Y axis between the hips of the receiver. And based on that, we can now code his dominant position. That defender is over, OK, this receiver and he's outside the receiver. OK, he's over the X axis. OK, and he's outside the Y axis. So he's over and outside. So we just put abbreviation OO for his coverage. All right. And what that does is that that's his leverage position at the rhythm phase. And what happens is, is if you grade a couple of these plays, you'll start to see patterns show up that allow you to know exactly how that defender is going to play within his coverage. That's called in this case, man coverage for him. And so that's the power of this is you can help your scout teams become much more better, but you're getting down to the detail of his dominant position on the rhythm phase. OK, the next thing we're going to grade is his hip angle. His hips are square to the line of scrimmage. So we write square. OK. So he's over and outside, he's square. And then the last thing we're going to grade, that's the A of the cap, uh, the angle of the hips. The last thing we're going to grade is his closure ability, okay? What's his ability to close space on the break point, all right? So we're going to play this slowly. You can see that there is no space gained out of this break. The ball is thrown, and he's immediately there to knock the ball down. That's positive closure. 
So what we learned in that one clip is that we don't want to run any slants against number five when he's press man, right? There's better ways to attack him that we're going to see. That is not one of them. So how does that help me with Bryce Young? Okay, well, I can say, Bryce, hey, we're going to go national championship, Bryce. And if I have a slant called number five's pressing, that route's dead. That's capped. Like, we can already play the game before it's been played. We don't need to watch 10 other clips of him playing that in just one play. That's that's what we can determine there, okay? So this is the same game. This is Tennessee versus Georgia early in the year. I'm just taking one game because I want to show you how much value you can get just in one game in a few clips. Here's number five, the same game. Now he's playing soft man. OK, now what I want you to see is the difference. OK, so this is a glance route. It's a five step slant. All right. Against soft man. So, again, we're going to write the route. We're going to stop the clip at the last step of the quarterback's drop. That's the rhythm phase. And we're going to grade cushion, collision and cap. All right. Now, this point, he is not playing with collision. He's playing with cushion. Right. OK, so he's not a collision player when he's in soft man. He's a cushion player. So we're going to gauge how much cushion that he has. Now, we use a four yard rule. And I'm not going to have time to explain what the value of the four-yard rule is, the powerful heuristic that will help you make better decisions. But any time that we see a receiver within four yards of a defender, that is negative cushion for us. So his cushion grade would be negative. And that tells us, again, some valuable information I'm not going to be able to go into right now. It um, really helps us on vertical space, but that's a negative cushion. Now we're going to grade his cap. So we're going to put a quad through that receiver. And we can see now that he's playing with over and inside leverage, okay, and he has a square hip angle. Actually, he's slightly outside, and it's hard to see from your angle, but he's actually slightly outside. His hips are square, okay, so we see the same pattern that we saw in the previous clip, but the result is different. Now, what you're seeing now is on the glance, okay, space is gained out of the break, all right? So when he is a cushion player, all right, and we look, look at this, this is a fine um, – really great we're going to give here. I'm going to talk quickly about break rates. So again, what I do with break rates, and again, this is some advanced stuff we go in detail in the book. Um, what we do is we match, we see if the defender can match the break step of the receiver with his drive step. All right, so there's the break of the receiver. That's his break step. I'm going to go through it real slowly here. Okay, there's the break step. What happens now is this defender, his break step should be in the ground. He's got to try to match his break foot, his outside foot with the outside foot of the receiver. The drive step is drive phase is right here. And this defender has to match his drive step with the receiver's drive step to get positive closure. Well, in this case, he was a step behind. That's a negative break rate, which equals negative closure. So again, what does that tell us? It tells us that soft man, all right, glance routes are very good. Press man, not so good. Why is why are glance routes better than soft man? He has a negative break rate on those routes. All right. So again, that's a pattern we saw. All right. We'll look at one more. Same game. So we had two types of, of man he was playing. He's playing press man, soft man. And on this one, he's playing press bail. Okay. So he's playing press bail. So he's going to turn into a zone coverage here. So again, if it's press bail, let's see how he plays zone coverage on a press bail technique. All right. So again, this is a curl route. So we'd write curl. We'd stop the clip at the last step of the quarterback's drop. That's a rhythm phase. All right. Cushion or collision here. Well, that's cushion. He's not trying to collision. We're within four yards. So that's negative cushion. That's the grade we're giving. All right. Now, at this point, at this phase, he is over and inside. He's over the X axis outside the Y or inside the Y. And then he has a full hip angle. All right. So any route that's run over 10 yards, he has a full hip angle. So he's in a dominant position to cap anything vertically, but not horizontally. So a curl route should be uncapped. Right. And it will be as long as he has a negative break rate. Right. So let's see his closure ability. Right. And so we're going to we're going to match, see if his break and drive step, there's the break, the step of the receiver. You see his break step matches that, okay? Drive step's a little late in the ground, so we're slightly heady, has a slightly negative break right here. Okay, and you can see that, that cushion remains, all right? So space is gained out of the break. So again, if we would have thrown that on the reset, if this quarterback would have rhythmed, right, the boundary and reset to the field, and we throw this as a read phase, that's an uncapped route, so I really like curls against press man on five because of his cushion level and his net and his negative break rate all right so again there's our scorecard so what did we learn in three plays we learned that a slant route with press man he has positive closure we want to stay away from that all right he also had positive collision so here's the cushion column right here's the cap column coverage angle and then personnel is this closure ability and there's just notes that we would write there so we want to stay away from the slant 
Okay. The next thing, the glance, if he's playing soft man, right? He had negative cushion. He was over and outside square. It looked just the same at the top of the rhythm phase, right? But he had negative closure. So we like the glance route against soft man, right? The curl route was great against press bell. Now the quarterback was looking off. That's another note that we might want to put there on that previous clip. The quarterback was actually not staring number five down. So that's something that we want to make sure our quarterback does as well. Well, we don't want to stare read rats down because that will now allow him to probably trigger a little faster on the route space. We want to look off on something on rhythm, whether it be a seam or a spot, and then reset to the read curl on the break. And so that's a note that we had here. Make sure you look off. All right. He had negative closure on the curl. So we like the glance and the curl inside breaking routes on those two situations. Stay away from the slant on press man. So now let's go to the national championship game and show how these grades come to life um, when you see it um, from Alabama's perspective. So here is a slant at the bottom of the screen. This is number five right here. And this is the slant being run by this X receiver. Again, what would I tell Bryce Young in our meeting rooms? We would show, watch those clips of Tennessee. We would grade the scorecard and we say, hey, if you got a press, uh, if, you, if you got number five press on you and we got a slant, it's probably best to go to the field side or go somewhere else in the play. All right, let's see if it holds true. All right, so we're going to stop the clip at the last step of the quarterback's drop. You can see he's get his hands on. He's able to squeeze the route inside. That's positive collision. And he's able to close that space. Bryce Young throws the slant, and he's all over the play and knocks it down. Looks just like that slant against Tennessee. That's a dead route. And I don't know if you watch this game, but how many times did Alabama get in the red zone and have to kick field goals? Like there, there was a better play to run here or a better matchup to go to, and that was not it based on those grades. Okay, here's the same game. All right, here's number five on a hitch route. So um, this is actually a sit route. So it sits a mini curl that breaks eight back to like six. So it's like the curl that we saw um, on the previous clip against Tennessee. Again, he number five is playing press bail. So again, we would tell our quarterback, hey, so if you see this press bail technique and you got like a sit or a, or a curl, that's going to be an optimal route. Okay. So again, we're going to stop the clip at the last step of the quarterback's drop. We're going to quad this receiver. You can see that the cushion still holds true that we graded all right you can see that he's over and inside just like we graded against Tennessee okay he has a zone hip angle all right would have been full if we would have been two or three more yards deeper it'd have been full so that's why it's still a zone all right and then you can see his his break rate is still negative the receivers break and drive step gets in the ground before his break and drive and we're able to catch that ball before he can close that space so again that was a route that should have held true based on the grade we saw in the Tennessee game, and that's why it was completed there. All right. Um, so, again, there's some more clips I could show you of attacking number five based on that, but that'll kind of give you a little bit of an idea of how we use those cap grades um, to game plan and confirm if routes are going to work against those particular defenders. Any questions on that, Coach? Anything I need to review on that? No, that, that was great. There's no question in the chat. I know there's a, a few, a bunch of people just jumped on. Um, I think saw my last tweet or saw the last tweet that got retweeted there. So um, if you have questions, please throw them in the chat. I know it's a lot of, especially if you've never, if you've never come across our four, you know, this, there's a lot of amazing information that I know there's a lot of guys. I've had a few guys text me privately. Just like, I'm not, I'm not asking any questions because my I'm writing so fast and anyway, so it's great stuff. I think the, the big takeaway for me in, in that part is, you know, you're, there's so much that we think going into a game, it's like a mystery, right? And you talk about, oh, you're going to play the game before it plays out, or at least you're going to be able to confirm those things really, really quickly. Um, and I've heard you say before in other interviews, um, and even in some of your books, you've talked about how, you know, you would waste plays trying to, you know, confirming what you think you already know, right? Like you might, a play might be like a, that slant route might be a base part of your, your offense, and so you call it three or four times when you really knew in the game plan, when you watched in the film, like this guy, this guy does a good job on slant routes, right? But you're still calling it a, a couple of times because it's a base play within your offense. And I think what this, you know, as you mentioned, what the big takeaway for me, what this allows you to do is say, hey, you know, we, if we get in these situations, you know, we're already aware of how this is going to play out because we have a concrete way of deciding what is, you know, a, a, an opportunity that's worth attacking and what's an opportunity that we need to do something different if we still want to access it, you know? So it doesn't mean you're just never going to run a slant route because this guy's a really good, 
you know, press man defender on slant routes. But like you mentioned before, you're going to have to use some kind of motion, some kind of stack, some kind of, you know, switch release or, or different release concept that's going to allow you to have that opportunity. Um, so no questions in the chat, coach. It, it's great stuff. I'll keep an eye as things go here. Um, got a question here. Is the grading sheet in the game plan pad? Yeah, so our, our, he's talking about our game plan pad. I don't know if I have one in my office right now, um, but we sell our four game plan pads. And so yep. um, what we do is, is, is we have our grading sheets um, after our calendars. We have a weekly calendar that you open up and you have a grading sheet for run and pass accelerators. What accelerators means? Accelerators are, are those cues, those visual cues. It's the cushion collision closure. It's those things that we're grading that accelerate our decision making to know if space is open or not. So that's what I, when I say grading accelerators, we're grading the DNA of, of a player and we're essentially creating a personnel profile of each player because that player is not going to change of how he plays a specific coverage within a week. Right. I mean, it takes years to, to get to get these guys to to match break rates or to get better eyes. They are who they are. So his closure ability on certain routes, there's going to be strengths for some and weaknesses on others. And that's what we're finding with this personal profile. And we're getting to those um, those weaknesses faster and staying away from the strengths much better. I have to tattoo on, on my forehead and also put it on my play call sheet. Trust your grades every game because I always get away from it. So again, I struggle with, with, cause I I'm like, well, I don't know. And then you go watch the film on a Saturday and you're like, if I would just trust the grades, there is opportunity left on the table. I didn't take advantage of. So again, that's my um, encouragement to you guys. If you start using this. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's, it's, it's such a unique way um, to come to concrete decisions. And I think as a, a young coach myself, still, you know, that, you know, that, that element you talk about, you know, trust, there's one thing to trust your gut. It's another thing to trust your process. Right. And sometimes I think, you know, when, when you don't have that concrete process, like the R4 system or, or like another language system that allows you to define, you know, literally what is open, you know, in this case, it, it, it's hard to, to know, am I, am I, am I being influenced by my own personal bias or by the opinion of someone else in this situation, or am I being influenced by what, I saw on film and what I'm confirming, you know, with my eyes in the game. So yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's a great tool. Yeah. I'd say trust your coaches and your players too. But for me, I couldn't trust what other coaches were telling me or my players before this, because we were working with different frames of reference in different languages and this eradicates all of it. It puts everybody in the same playing field. So now when my quarterback comes to me on the side and says, coach, we need to check to the, you know, the seam route or to, to the flood concept or whatever. I trust him because we're operating from the same frames of reference, using the same language, the same with my coaching staff. 